Hello everybody, welcome back. So, I've been doing a lot of grinding in Dungeon Quest, as you may be able to tell. I am currently level 69, I have been going non-stop. And in my time grinding, I've done a lot of runs on Impossible on the Sacred Sands. And I can tell you what, Kelly, you've never been there? It's tough. It's tough. All right. Wait, were you doing them by yourself? Or? I was doing them by myself, solo, sacred stands on impossible. All right? Wow. And I'm going to be honest. The first couple runs, I was destroyed. I got, I died a lot if I give up being completely honest. But okay. after doing a lot of runs, I have acquired a lot of tips and tricks that I think have made it much, much easier to do. And today we're here to share them. All of that we've put together for sacred stands on impossible, solo, including... A strategy for beating the boss that I think makes him honestly like five times easier. It's really good. The first thing to cover before we head into the dungeon is what kind of gear are you going to want going into the dungeon, all right? Okay. So right now, my main weapon I'm running is a, let's see, what sword is this called? The Dominator Sword with Pulse Fire. Now, Pulse Fire is a VIP ability. So you may not have access to this, but it's really good if you do. If you don't have VIP, I'd recommend going with something with Cyclone, I'd say, would be the best weapon spell to go with. Cyclone's very useful. Now, alongside that, you're gonna want a backup weapon with some kind of range. Now, you could go with either a uh, something with Wave Blast, if you're like a warrior build with lots of strength, like these, this fried chicken here. <laughs> or you could go okay. with a, a spell like Laser Beam or Fireball, any of those. Any of those will work. You're just gonna want some kind of backup ranged attack, all right? And if you're wondering what these babies are, these are the Bloxy Awards, which is one of the mythic drops you get in the Sacred Sands dungeon. Just to, just to prove to you that I've done this a lot, I have two of these. <laughs> I've done a lot of runs. You're also gonna want a backup, backup healing item, right? So you can have either, you know, there's lots of different healing items in the game, just some kind of healing spell. And optionally, you might want to take with you some kind of high magic headgear so that you can swap to that to heal really fast in a pinch. For your main headgear, I'd recommend going with something with a lot of health. Prioritize health over strength. Future bosses could have different uh, patterns and stuff, which we can cover in the future if you guys want guides for future impossible dungeons. But this is the method for the Anubis boss that I have found works pretty much every time. I haven't failed with it once yet, so that's what we're gonna be showing it. Yeah, now that we've covered all the gear, we've got everything, you know, what you're gonna need going into the dungeon, I think we should just hop in right now. Now we are in the dungeon, guys. Uh, Kelly's not here now because she sucks and is too low level. <laughs> But what we're going to be doing here now is we're going to start the dungeon and let's start off with talking about the basic enemy types, right? So usually what I do with Pulse Fire is I'll just grab, you know, a big pile of enemies, get them all following me, and hit them with a Pulse Fire, and that pretty much takes out all of them instantly. Now say you don't have Pulse Fire, here's what I'd recommend doing with Cyclone, right? Get all the enemies in a group. Oh no, no, I don't, I don't want to aggro the, the mini boss yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, get all the enemies in a group. You're going to want to use these walls around the map to your advantage here. Get them all in a group. Get them all up against a wall so that they can't hit you. Hit them with a cyclone, and you should be able to kill them all pretty much instantly. Pretty easy. And uh, that's going to be like your main strategy going through this dungeon. Use the walls, use different things to catch enemies on. Now over here we have a mini boss, the Reaper. Uh, when it comes to mini bosses, you kind of just got to charge him. You just got to go for it. Because especially the Reaper, he can just pick you up from anywhere on the map. There's no getting away from him or uh, dodging his damage. You just got to get in there and get him. So before I fight him, this is one of the situations where Wave Blast is really useful. I'm just going to take my Wave Blast weapon. I'm going to get some of the enemies around him aggroed and kill them before I go and try and take down him so that there's a little less damage on me. Before I go in, though, I am going to heal, which is something you should be doing a lot. Like, especially when you're up against a mini boss, make sure you heal up to full before going in. Now I'm ready to go fight the mini boss. So I'm going to go in there <laughs> and I'm going to try not to die. All right, let's go. And he fixed me up immediately. Come on! Dude, the Reaper is like my least favorite um, mini boss. He, he's so garbage the way he picks you up. Also, Kelly, I know you, I think you can hear me right now if you're muted. Do you think the yes. Reaper is like uh, an Overwatch reference? Maybe. Because I'm, I feel like some of these uh, names are an Overwatch reference. I'm just leveling up. I'm carrying noobs right now. Oh, that's cool. Now, say you don't have dual wield even. Like, if I, if you don't have dual wield, you can still get through this just fine. It's just going to take a bit longer. But you just got to do the same thing. Just grab a bunch of enemies. Now, oh gosh, Kaisers. Kaisers are a big problem. They do a lot of damage, but the real thing that makes them so troublesome is they're faster than all the basic enemies. They can catch up to you, and they will mess your day up. So with Kaisers, you don't want to get like a huge group. Take them more slowly. Get them caught on a wall and just really uh, be careful because they can take you from 900 health to zero in an instant if they catch up to you. Let me, let me switch back to my 
pulse fire swords just to go through this faster i think i've made my point that it's completely uh doable with the uh cyclone and guys if you're enjoying this guide and you're finding it helpful so far be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you're not already and let me know in the comments if you want to see more guides like these in the future for treasure quests you know going through the next dungeons that get released on impossible this uh this took a lot of time but i think i got some really good tips together so if you want to see more like this let me know let me know okay so i'm gonna run them all through again just get the whole group following me now any enemy that's not the Kaisers, you can basically just deal with them like this, just get them in a big group, and yeah, it, it goes fine. The wolves, they're nothing. Wolves are nothing, Emperor is nothing. No one's nothing, except Kaisers. They mess you up. We're running through, we got another mini boss over here. How about I take this mini boss down with the handsaw, with no dual wield, just to see if I can do it, you know? Give myself a challenge. So first, let me get some of the lower level enemies here, bring them around, get them caught on the wall, as we do, hit them with the cyclone, Smack him a couple times. All right, I'm a bit low on HP right now, so I'm gonna heal. And as you're going through the dungeon, you're gonna want to start like after the first couple um, levels. You're gonna want to start healing before you start each new level when there's just a couple enemies left, because I speak from experience when I say you do not want to be on like half HP and kill the last enemy, and then that's the boss. That's not a position you want to be in. <laughs> I, I can tell you right now, it is not good. All right, and let's go see if we can deal with the Reaper over here with just the no dual wield cyclone and you already picked me up dang it so yeah basically just got him stuck here and this is basically what you're gonna do with most of the bosses if you can some of them you can't like the star guardian for example you just have to rush him get up in their face because the bullets will hit you from anywhere and there we go i just killed him with with no dual wield no you know anything just using my cyclone ability here now just to show you guys that you don't need all the vip stuff really or any any kind of robux items you can do it without dual wield without vip items you know if you're just skillful and you take your time you can get through this level with pretty much any uh any any setup but i am going to be using my pulse fire and dual wield here just for the purposes of this video make it go a bit faster for you guys all right we got a blaze over here just rush him as always that is the strategy just get him get up in his grill take him down as quickly as possible boom 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 all right we got him same thing with the wolves boom got him we had another wall here so just get them all up in a group all up in a group let's see i wonder how big of a group i can build here i'm gonna try and get like as many as i can here we got another bunch over here i'm taking some damage this might be a bad idea we're gonna find out though it's all right worth it totally worth it oh i messed up the pulse fire i didn't get all of them at once dang it I got a big group, but I wasn't able to kill all of them once. Oh, oh, boss fight. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, gosh. Am I not on full FG? Oh, no. I'm 200 down. Okay. That's unfortunate. Okay, guys. When you when you get to the boss, here's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to basically just run straight past the boss. And oh, my gosh. I don't have my audio on. Oh, my gosh. I never turned my audio on when I got in the dungeon. Oh, my gosh. I'm dumb as a brick. <laughs> what you're going to want to do is run straight past the boss. Head right up the pyramid here. Once you're up here, you can dodge the uh, tornadoes pretty easily. Let me turn my audio back up here. Because you may be wondering, you know, how do I dodge the tornadoes when I can't see them, right? And the secret to dodging them when the the dust storm's coming through is you have to listen for the audio cue. There's a very distinct, like, swoosh, swoosh, swoosh sound when the tornadoes are fired. You just have to listen for that, and you can easily dodge even when you can't see. Listen, 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 and go. Ah, still hit me. Okay. Another thing is if you do get hit by a tornado, it's not the end of the world. You just have to mash spacebar to regain control in the air. And then you can uh, pretty easily strafe back onto the pyramid. Now, let me heal up a bit, though. And I'll go over the general kind of loop when you're fighting this boss. All right, you're going to want to stay up on the pyramid while the water is up. As soon as the water goes down, you're going to want to run in. You can probably get one or two hits with your ability. Don't push it, because you will die if you do. But get one or two hits in with your cyclone or your pulse fire. And then you're going to want to run right back up onto the pyramid, heal up any damage you took while fighting the boss, and continue dodging the tornado. And basically, that's just the loop you're going to repeat until you've killed them. See, if you're, as long as you're on top of the pyramid, even getting hit by a tornado or two does not really do that much to you. Oh, gosh. You got to be really careful, though, when you're down here, because if you stay down here too long, you can get hit by a tornado, and then you get not- Oh! Not like this! No, that was what I was trying to warn about! No! Oh, no, guys. That's why you don't stay down. Oh, my gosh. All right. Kelly, what happened was I got glitched out when I got hit by a tornado, and I got flung a mile away from the pyramid. 
<laughs> and then I drowned. All right, so guys, I've revived here. Um, I'm gonna do another run of this just to show you a true no dying run. But yeah, what you saw right there is why you don't want to stay down in the area too long, or you don't want to stay down on the ground too long when you're going in when the water comes down because if you stay too long and you get hit by a tornado, sometimes it just glitches you out, flings you a mile away and you can't control your character and then you just die. Yeah, there's really nothing you can do about that other than be careful. Oh, also, pro tip, if you get knocked off the sides here and you have to climb up the ladder to get back on, it happens occasionally. But if you're, on, if you get knocked off the sides of the, um, on, if you get knocked off the sides of the pyramid by a tornado and you need to get back up fast, go turn backwards and walk up the ladder backwards. It'll let you go up faster. Like if you, uh, if you go forwards, you jitter a bit as you're going up and it's not as smooth. Turn around, you go up this way, boom, much faster. All right, guys, we're back in on our second run here. Uh, we're going to speed through this now until we get to the boss so that I can show you guys how to defeat him without dying, which was a really unfortunate death there. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I'll see you guys at the boss. All right, guys, yeah. really quickly. Uh, actually, we got an Obsidian Knight here, which we didn't get in our first run. So this is actually really good. I want to go over a bit how you should deal with Obsidian Knights when you're uh, facing them. So what you want to do is you want to get them stuck on some kind of piece of terrain. And he hopped over that. <laughs> okay, you're going to need a bit of a taller wall than that. But you're going to want to get him stuck on one of these walls here. Let me take him up to it. Boom. So guys, as you you might know, but if you don't, the Obsidian Knight explodes when he dies. And he does a ton of damage. It is based on your health and it scales with your HP, right? So it's like no matter what you have, he will mess you up. So you're going to want to be really careful when facing him. So this is the reason I recommend taking a ranged weapon with like Wave Blast or either a laser beam or something. Basically, what you're going to want to do is get him down to about... You know a thousand hp or so whatever a one hit range would be for whatever your range weapon is then you want to get your range weapon get far away back up like at least at least like this far ish you're going to want to be and then once you're a good distance away hit him with a wave blast finish him off boom no damage you don't die instantly and that's how you do it all right now let's get to the boss there we go is this the boss is this the boss is this the boss it's the boss i was right okay let's go, 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 go. Okay, so you can run straight through. Watch, see the boss is already moving towards me because I'm already running through. So when you get to the boss, you want to run straight past him, go straight up to the pyramid. Just get right up on here. I cannot see anything because of the dust. All right, now that we're fighting the boss, from here you can dodge the tornado, it's pretty easy. And when the sandstorm comes through, you should just listen to the audio cue and that's how you're going to dodge it when you can't see it. Make sure to stay, I, I'd recommend staying low on the pyramid because it means you'll get flung less. If you get hit, like you'll hit the wall and you won't go as far. And make sure if you do get hit by a tornado, bam spacebar to regain control of your character in the air so that you don't go as far. But now, basically what you're going to want to do when you're hiding up on the pyramid as the flood comes up, just switch to healing or something. Heal yourself up to full. Make sure you're ready for when the water goes down. And I cannot see what's going on right now. Okay. Make sure you're up to full. And then as soon as the water goes down, you're going to want to run down with either your cyclone or your pulse fire. Get in a hit or two on the uh, boss and then run back up. Don't overstay your welcome because as we saw earlier, you will get flung far away by the, uh, the tornadoes. And if that happens, you are surely going to die to the water. So you can get an easy like 20,000 damage per time you come down. Then just come back up again, heal yourself up, and just keep repeating that till you beat the boss on the water. Okay, guys, let's show off the tip for getting up the ladder fast. Boom, okay. Easy. See, even if you go off the ladder, it's not the end of the world. You can get back up pretty easily. Water's probably about to go back down, and this will probably be the last uh, last one right here. We're probably about to get him. Oh, 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 getting flung, getting flung. Make sure you spam space if that happens. Get back up. All right, get regain control. We're good, we're good. See, you don't really get flung that far as long as you mash space when you get by a tornado. Okay, we're going back down. Water, this, water's down. This is it. This is going to be the one right here. Boom, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, we got him. There we go. No death. We got the boss. That was the strategy right there, guys. Congratulations, Michael. Thank you. So to sum up the tips now for the boss, basically, the moment the door opens, you want to run straight past the boss, head up the pyramid. He'll get stuck on this little part of the uh, map here. He'll just stand there and keep throwing tornadoes at you. Just dodge the tornadoes around the pyramid. If you get hit by a tornado, spam space to regain control in the air so you don't get flung as far. Wait for the water to come down and heal while you're up there. As soon as the water's down, come down with your pulse fire or cyclone. Hit him once, go back up, and just keep repeating that until you uh, kill him. Pretty simple, pretty easy. I was in the lobby once and I used my pulse fire ability and someone just walked up to me and went, do that again. <laughs> I got hair. 
I literally got an item that's just hair. It's, it's Telemon hair, and it's a level 74 item, and it gives 218 magic. Dude, I Bro. want... <laughs> That's honestly great. All right, guys, there you have it, though. Those are all the tips and the boss guide for the Sacred Sands on Impossible Difficulty. I hope these tips help you, and tell us in the comments if they did, and what level are you right now? How are you doing in Treasure Quest? You leveling up a lot? That's gonna do it for today, though, guys. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to drop a like and smash that subscribe button. Also, check out the description for links to our social medias if you want to follow us on there, as well as our Discord. We'll see you next one, though, guys. Bye! Bye, everybody!